Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is theCUBE live in San Francisco for Google Cloud. Big event here called Google Next 2018. Hashtag Google Next 18. I'm John Dave Vellante. Uh, bringing down all the top stories, all the top technology news, all the stuff that they're announcing on stage, talking to the, the executives, the product managers, customers, analysts, you name it, we want to get that signal and extract it and share that with you. Our next guest is Dan Heron, who's the product manager for Cloud AI at Google and Dialogflow with the hot product here under his purview. Thanks for joining us. Good to Hi, see you. Yeah, excited <laughs> to be here. Yeah, we're just bantering off camera because we love video, we love speech to text, we love all kinds of automation that can add value to someone's products rather than having to do a lot of grunt work or not having any capability. So we're super excited about what you're working on uh, and the variety of things. This one's the biggest. Um, dialogue, flow, yeah. talk about the product. Sure, yeah, what yeah. What is it? Yeah, so, so Dialogue Flow, um, it's a, uh, a platform for building conversational applications, conversational interfaces, so it could be chatbots, it could be voice bots. Um, and uh, it started from the acquisition of API AI that we did uh, a year and a half ago. Um, and it's been uh, gaining a lot of momentum since then. So last year at Google Cloud Next, um, we announced that we just crossed 150,000 developers in the Dialogflow community. Um, yesterday, we just announced that we now crossed 600,000. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's- Hold oh, on, back up, slow down. I think I just missed that. You had what and then turned into what? Say it again. Uh, so it was 150,000 uh, last year, or, or over 150, and now it's over 600,000. Congratulations, uh, so, that's massive. Yeah, and that's traction. It's, it's, yeah, it's very, very exciting. It's 4X. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, and we, we, uh, we, you know, we're still seeing like, a lot of strong growth um, and um, you know, with the new announcements we made yesterday, uh, we think it's going to take a much larger role, especially in larger enterprises and especially in sort of powering enterprise contact centers. You know, uh, natural language processing, also known as NLP for the folks that uh, you know, know the jargon or don't know the jargon, it's been around for a long time. There's been a series of uh, open source, academia has done it. Just, it's just never, ontology's been around, it's like, just, it's just never cracked the code. Nothing has been actually blown, blown me away over the years, right. until cloud came. So with cloud, you're yeah. seeing a rebirth right. of NLP, because now you have scale, yeah. you got compute power, more access to data. This is a real big deal. Can you just talk about the importance of why cloud and NLP and other things that were, I won't say stunted or hit a glass ceiling in big capability. Why is cloud so important? Because you're seeing a surge yeah. of new services. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so, so there's two big things. One is cloud, the other is machine learning and AI. And uh, they kind of advanced uh, speech recognition, natural language understanding, speech synthesis, all of the big technologies that we're working on. Um, so with cloud, um, there's now sort of a lot more processing that's done centrally and there's more availability of data that you could use to train models and that feeds well into machine learning. And so, you know, with machine learning we can do stuff that was you know, much harder to do before machine learning existed. Um, and um, you know, with some of these new tools, like, like what, what makes Dialogflow special is you could use it to um, build stuff very, very easily. So, um, you know, I showed last year at Google Cloud Next how you build a bot uh, for an imaginary um, Google hardware store. Uh, we built the whole thing in 15 minutes and deployed it on a messaging platform, uh, and it was done. <laughs> and uh, so it's so quick and easy, anyone can do it now. So, so we could do an Ask the Cube bot. Yeah. Take our yeah. transcripts and have canned answers maybe down the road. We're going to automate it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill our sure. job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. And um, what's interesting is it's shifting the focus from kind of developers and IT to more to the business users. So what we're seeing is uh, a lot of our customers, one of the uh, people that went on stage yesterday in the Dialogflow session, they were saying that now 90% of the work is actually done by the business users that are programming the tool. Really, because so it's a low code type of environment? Yeah, you, you, uh, you can build simple things without coding. Now, you know, if you're a large enterprise, you're probably going to need to have a fulfillment layer yeah. that has code, but uh, it's somewhat abstracted from the NLU piece. And so you can, you, know, you can do a lot of things directly on the UI without any code. So I can get started as a business user, yes. 
develop some function, get used to it, and then learn over time and add more value, and then bring in my real hardcore devs when I, when I really want some new functions. Right, to right, so yeah, what it handles is understanding uh, what the user wants. So um, if you're building a cube uh, bot, and it needs, uh, what Dialogflow will do is to help you understand uh, what the user is saying to the cube bot. And then what you need to bring in a developer for is to then fulfill it. So if yeah. you want to, for example, every time they ask for cube merchandise, you want to send them a shirt or a yeah. toy or something, yeah. you want your developer to connect it to your warehouse or whatever. Or they could say, the best, give us the best blockchain content you have. Right. There it is. Yeah, yeah. so how would yeah. we go about that? We have all this, this corpus of, of data that we ingest and we would just, <clears throat> how would, what would we do with that? How, take us through a, an example. Um, so, you would want to um, identify what are the really important use cases that you want to fulfill. You don't want to do everything, because right. you know, you're going to spread yourself thin and it won't be high quality. Uh, you want to pick what are the 20% of things that drive 80% of, of the traffic, and then fulfill those. And then uh, for the rest, you probably want to just uh, transition to a human and so, have it handled by humans. So, so let's say for us, we want it to be topical. Right, so would we somehow go through and auto-categorize the data and, and pick the top topics and say, okay, now we want a chatbot to be able to ask questions about the most relevant content in these five areas, 10 areas or whatever. Is that a, would that be a reasonable use case that you could actually tackle? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we, we, there's a lot of tools, some Google offer, some that you know, others offer, that, uh, that can do that kind of categorization, but you would want to, um, kind of figure out what are the important use cases that you want to uh, fulfill, and then sort of build paths around them. Okay, and then you've got ML behind this, and this is right. a function, I can, I can, this fits into your serverless strategy, or you just G, announced GA today, yeah. so. Well, right? uh, I, yeah, I no, so we a... announced GA um, a few months ago. Yeah, okay, what, right, what we right. announced yesterday was uh, five new features that help transform Dialogflow into sort of from a tool. What are those features? Take a minute to explain. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, uh, first is our dialogue for phone gateway. What it does, it can turn any bot into an IVR that can respond uh, within, uh, it takes 30 seconds to set up. You basically just choose a phone number and it attaches a phone number and it costs zero dollars per month, zero nothing. You just, uh, you pay for usage if, you, if it actually goes above, above a certain limit. And then, uh, it does all the speech recognition, speech synthesis, natural language understanding, orchestration, it does it all for you. So, you know, setting up an IVR a few years ago used to be something that, you know, you needed millions of dollars Science to set up. Science project, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, now you can do it in a few minutes. Uh, wow. Second is our knowledge connectors. What it does, it uh, lets you incorporate enterprise knowledge into your chatbot. It could either be FAQs or articles, and so now, um, uh, if you have some sort of FAQ, again, in like less than a minute, you can, can build it into Dialogflow without having to build intents for it. Yeah. Um, then uh, the other, there are a few other smaller ones uh, we introduced also are uh, speech synthesis, um, automatic spell correction, which is really important for chatbots because people always uh, have yeah. typos. I'm guilty yeah. just <laughs> as much as everyone. Yeah. Uh, and uh, last, uh, but not least uh, sentiment analysis. So when it helps you understand when you want to transition to a human. For example, if you have someone sort of that's not, not super happy. Uh, Agent! Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, some of these capabilities were available separately. So for example, you know, you could have um, built a phone gateway uh, and connected it to Dialogflow before, but it used to be a big project that took a lot of work. So. Um, you know, we had a guest speaker yesterday uh, in the session for, for Dialogflow, and uh, they've been running a POC with a few vendors right now. Uh, that's, it's been going on for a few months, and they told us that with Dialogflow, phone gateway and knowledge connectors, they were able to build something in a few hours that took a few months to do with other vendors, because they had to stitch together multiple services, yeah. configure them, set them up, do all and of so that. So the use case for this, just to kind of, first of all, Pete, chatbots have been hot for a while, super great, but now you have an integrated complex system behind it powering a elegant front end. Yep. I could see this as a great bolt on to products, whether it's websites or apps, right. um, how to's, instrumentation, education, a lot of different apps. Yep. That seems to be the use case. How does someone learn more about it? How do they get involved? They go to the website, they download some yeah. code. Just take us through, I want to jump in tomorrow or now. Yeah. What it's do I do? Free addition I can do. I can exactly, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so the good news is, um, yeah, you could go to either cloud.google.com slash dialogflow or dialogflow.com. 
There's, um, if you go to dialogflow.com, you can sign up for the standard edition, which is 100% free. Um, uh, it's uh, for text interactions. It's um, unlimited up to a small amount of traffic. Uh, and you can even play around with the phone gateway and knowledge connectors with a limited amount without even giving a credit card. Uh, if you want cloud terms of service and enterprise grade reliability, we also offer Dialogflow Enterprise Edition, which is available on cloud.google.com. Uh, and you can sign up there. So and that comes with an SLA that... Exactly, an SLA and like cloud data terms of service and you know, everything that's kind of attached with that. Um, I'd also encourage people to check out the YouTube clip for, um, for the session that was yesterday that was uh, where we, we demoed the all these new features. Sorry? What was the name of the session? Um, automating session. your contact center with uh, virtual agents. Okay, check that out on YouTube. Uh, good session. Okay, so, so take us through the roadmap. And you're on the product, so you're product manager, so this is, you got to decide priorities. Yeah. Um, probably to maybe cut some things, make things work better. What's on the roadmap? What's the guiding principle? What's the north star for this product? Yeah, so for us, um, it's all about the quality of the end user experience. So the reality is, uh, there's you know many thousands of bots out there in the world, yeah. and most of them are not great. <laughs> most of them suck, I'll say. Most of them really suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you Google uh, for why chatbots, why chatbots fail is the first result, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of our North Star. We want to solve that. We want to help um, you know, different developers, whether they're startups, whether they're enterprises, we want to help them build high quality bots. And so, a lot of the features we announced yesterday are kind of parts of that journey. For example, integrated sentiment analysis that lets you transition to humans, because we know we can't solve everything, so it helps you understand. Or um, knowledge well, Automation connectors. helps to a certain point, but right. humans are really important right. at a crossover point. Yeah, Trying to understand that's important. Exactly, and we'd rather help uh, people build bots that are focused on specific use cases, but do them really, really well, versus do a lot, uh, but um, you know, leave users with a with a feeling like they're talking to a bot that doesn't understand them, and you know, they have a bad experience. We can take all the questions we've done on the cube, Dave, and put them into a chat bot. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What's the future of bots? Yeah. Go ahead. Answer the <laughs> question. <laughs> so. Uh, I think, so we're, we're kind of, in the last year or two, we've been at an inflection point where um, speech recognition has advanced dramatically. Yeah. And it's now good enough that it can understand uh, really complex questions. So you can yeah. see with sort of Google Assistant and Google Home and a bunch of other things that people can now converse with bots and get sort of reasonably good uh, answers back. And that just feeds ML in a big way. Right, exactly, and so now, um, you know, Dialogflow uh, introduced speech recognition in November. We just introduced speech synthesis yesterday. And so uh, we're now, you know, we're looking to empower all of our developers to build these, these amazing voice-based experiences with Dialogflow. Give an anecdote or an experience that the customers had where you guys are like, wow, that blew me away. That is so cool, or that was just so technically amazing, or that was unique and we've never seen that coming. Give us some, share some color commentary around some of the implementations of the bot bot world and the dialogue flows impact to someone's business or life? Uh, yeah, sure, so, um, so I think, uh, so yesterday, um, the, the, the Ticketmaster team was showing how, um, you know, how they, they, uh, they, they look at their current IVR that's kind of based in the old world where you have to give um, very short responses like yes or no, or like San Francisco, California. And because it's, it's built on these short responses, it's kind of a guided IVR. It takes 11 steps. What's an IVR again? Oh, uh, integrated voice response. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, or interactive voice response. It's, yeah, it's a system two. that uh, yeah. answers the I want to make sure I get the jargon right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now with something like Dialogflow, they can go and build something like that. Instead of 11 steps, it takes three steps. So because someone can just say, you know, I'd like to buy tickets for so and so and, and complete the sentence. And the cool thing is, um, Sort of the example that they gave was a recording uh, that that I made with them about a year plus ago, and it, it, the example was, um, you know, I'd like to book tickets for chain smokers, and then they were showing it yesterday in the conference. And then they're like, oh, we know why you chose it. It's because the chain smokers yeah, are performing yeah. at Google Cloud Next. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, finally, it's just a funny coincidence. But uh, so awesome. they've deployed yeah. this now, or they're in the process of deploying? Uh, it? They're in the process of deploying it first for customer service and. Um, at a later stage, it's going to be for sales as well. Yeah, because the, the, the IVR for Ticketmaster today, I know it well, I'm a customer, I love Ticketmaster, but you're right. 
it, it tells you what you just asked them pretty well. But it really doesn't quite solve your problem. Yeah, well, it's, so. I mean, they, they recognize the sales one is built, yeah. uh, was built a long time ago, yep. uh, but uh, they're, they're kind of overhauling all of that. But right I'm excited now. to see it, because it's a good point of comparison. You know, you always have a good reference point that you understand. Yeah. And then, so, but I'm, uh, the, the takeaway that I'm getting, Dan, is the, is the advice you're giving is, nail the use case, narrow it down, right. and then start there. Don't try to do, you know, too wide of a scope. Exactly, exactly. Handle, um, the most important thing is delivering great end user experiences because you want people uh, to really enjoy talking to the bot, right? Uh, so in, in surveys, people say, 60% of, uh, of consumers say that the, the, the thing they want to improve most in customer service is getting more self-serve tools. They're not looking to talk to humans, but they're forced to because the self-serve tools, so yeah. yeah, they're, ter they're yeah. terrible. And so, it's terrible, and they, if I can get it quickly self-serve, I'd love that every time. Right. I serve myself gas and a variety of other things. Airport kiosks have gotten so much better. Yeah. You know, I don't mind those anymore. Well, okay, one quick follow-up on Dave's point yeah. about making it focus. I totally agree, that's a great point. Is there a recommendation on how the data should be structured on the ingest side. What's the training data? Is there a certain best practice that you recommend on, on having a certain kinds of data? Is it Q&A? Is it it's just text? Speaks this way. Is it a blob of data that, has, that gets parsed by the engine? I mean, take us through what the, on the Great data question. piece. Yeah, uh, so that, that really um, changes a lot. So depending on the specific use case, specific company, specific customer. So uh, someone asked uh, in the audience yesterday, um, you know, uh, ask the guest speakers like how many intents they've built in dialogue flow and uh, you know each one of them had a uh, had like very different answers right so it, it depends a lot but um, I would say the goal is to kind of focus on the top use cases that really matter build high quality conversations and then build a lot of intents and 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 uh, text examples in those and when I say a lot it doesn't actually we don't need a lot because dialogue flow is built on machine learning so you know, sometimes a few dozen is enough, or maybe you know, like a couple hundred if you need to. But like, uh, you know, we we see people trying tens of thousands, or, or like we we don't need that much data. Uh, and then for the other stuff that's not in your core use cases, that's where you can use things like knowledge connectors or other ways to respond to to people rather than sort of manually building them yeah. or um, you know, just divert them to, to human associates that can fill those Great questions. Great job, Dan. So you're the lead product manager on uh, I'm I'm uh, the lead product manager for Dalek for Enterprise Edition. Uh, uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a large team kind of working with me on the, on the product. Uh, we, we don't we don't talk about that. Well, what are the products? <laughs> what are the products do you do? You uh, own? I, oh, I'm also um, I'm also a product manager for cloud speech to text and cloud text to speech. Awesome. Well, great to have you on. Thanks for sharing. Super exciting. Um, love the focus. I think it's a great strategy of having something that's not a one-trick pony bot kind of model. Having something that's more comprehensive. Seeing that's why bots fail. But I think there's a real need for great self-service. It's the Google way. Get your search result. Get out quick. Get your results. I mean, this is a Google ethos. Yeah. You know, get in, get your get your answer. Yeah, we're all about democratizing AI. So you know, now with 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 cloud speech to text, cloud text to speech, it put the power of Google speech recognition, speech synthesis in the hands of any developer. Now with Dialogflow, we're taking that a step further, and um, you know, anyone can build their their voice bots uh, with ease. What what used to cost like millions of dollars, or you know, need special expertise. All right, Dan Harron, who's the product manager for the Dialogflow Enterprise Edition and, and doing cloud AI for Google is to bring you all the best dialogue here in theCUBE, doing our part. Soon we'll have a CUBE bot. You can ask us any question and we'll have a canned answer from one of the CUBE interviews. I'm Dave Vellante, he's here with me. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>